Hi there, welcome to this short talk on building high performance containers with Easy Build Arch Pack and ArchPack. My name is Kenneth Hoste and I work at the HPC team at Ghent University in Belgium. I'm also the lead developer of the Easy Build project. You can see me on the right in the picture. The person on the left is Todd Gamblin from Lawrence Livermore National Lab. He's the lead developer of the SPAC project, who helped me out with putting this presentation together. Hopefully this helps limit the bias of this talk towards Easy Build. Let's see how that works out. Let's set the stage by briefly looking at how scientific software is typically installed on HPC systems. In this context, we usually compile software from source, so we can specifically target the system on which the software will be used, which can make a significant difference in terms of performance for the resulting installations. Next to this performance aspect, getting scientific software installed tends to be quite messy. It may involve installing lots of dependencies first, for example, or using very recent compiler versions potentially combined with old source code that is not actively maintained, or very large and complex code bases, and so on. This is a widely recognized problem in the HPC community, and recent, recently several tools have emerged to help deal with this. In this talk, I'll briefly cover two of them, EasyBuild and SPAC. Let's start with EasyBuild, which is a tool for installing scientific software on HPC systems. It was created by the HPC team in Ghent back in 2009 and was first released publicly in 2012. Since then it has been widely adopted in the HPC community. Today it supports installing almost 2000 different software packages, not including add-ons like Python packages or R libraries, and ignoring software versions, among which are several notorious applications when it comes to getting them properly installed, like OpenFoam and TensorFlow when you want to install it from source code. There's an active mailing list and Slack channel for the EasyBuild project, and throughout the years we have organized various meetups, including EasyBuild user meetings in the last five years. So it's a very vibrant community. Over 250 different people have made contributions to the EasyBuild project and last year we merged over 2,500 pull requests. For more information, check out our website and documentation or take a look at some of the recorded talks that are available on our YouTube channel. The links are shown at the top of this slide. On this slide, I want to highlight a couple of the features that EasyBuild provides. First of all, it makes stacking software installations that are located in different places on the system very easy. This enables researchers to install their own small software stack on top of what is already installed centrally on the system. It also allows to leverage vendor-provided installations like you get in the Cray programming environment, for example. You can customize EasyBuild to your needs in a number of different ways. Through hooks, you can make sure that specific software packages are configured in a particular way. And thanks to the plugin-like system that EasyBuild supports, it is very simple to add support for additional software packages, without having to maintain patches to the EasyBuild codebase. One particularly cool aspect of EasyBuild is the integration with GitHub. You can create pull requests to the GitHub project straight from the EasyBuild command line, without having to deal with Git or the GitHub web interface. You can also test contributions by pulling in changes from a pull request, and even report back the results, all directly from the EasyBuild command line. Finally, EasyBuild can also, can also submit installations as jobs to a resource manager like Slurm. This makes it particularly easy to install a large software stack on a new system, for example, by leveraging the available resources through the job queue. Now let's take a quick look at the SPAC project, which is a package manager for HPC systems. SPAC's core functionality is similar to that of EasyBuild, but it takes a very different approach to the problem. It provides a flexible command line interface that allows you to specify only the aspects of an installation you really care about, and it then fills in the blanks for you. That way you can easily build the configuration you want. Some of the ideas implemented in SPAC are inspired by Nix and Homebrew. The project was started by Todd Gamblin at Lawrence Livermore National Lab in 2013, and a large community has grown around it since then. Similar to EasyBuild, it provides support for installing several thousand different software packages. It is used to build the E4S software distribution of the Exascale computing project. The SPAC community is very active, and the tool is used on several of the top 10 supercomputers. For more information, see the SPAC website and documentation, or join their Slack channel. The links are available at the top of this slide. This slide shows some of the features provided by SPAC. As I already mentioned, the SPAC command line interface is very flexible. It allows you to only specify the aspects of an installation you really care about. This information is then fed into a concretization algorithm, which produces a complete specification of what to install. And this is used by the templated 
packages included in SPAC to actually install the software. SPAC supports so-called environments, which are sort of similar to the environment concept in Virtual and for Conda. You can specify an abstract specification of an environment in the spac.yaml file. The spac install command consumes this file to install the environment, and it generates a spac.log file that completely defines it. Spac does not require a modules tool, as opposed to EasyBuild. Powerful CI integration with GitLab is available through the spac CI command, which allows you to generate a GitLab pipeline. So rebuilds can be triggered every time a change is made to the environment or to spac itself. Finally, SPAC also provides support for creating and installing relocatable binary packages, which significantly decreases the installation time for complex software like Trilinos. The E4S distribution provides binary packages that you can leverage today. EasyBuild and SPAC are quite similar in many ways. Both are open source tools that are implemented in Python and actively developed on GitHub. The main purpose is installing scientific software without using admin privileges and there is a strong focus on HPC systems and performance. Both projects have a similar internal structure and are highly configurable and well documented. EasyBuild and SPAC are used and developed by a worldwide community and both of them provide support for building container images as well. This slide gives you an idea of where both EasyBuild and SPAC are used. Both tools have seen worldwide adoption shortly after the project was started. EasyBuild is used by several European and North American HPC sites, including Compute Canada, the Swiss National Supercomputing Center CSCS, and the ULIC Supercomputer Center, as well as the Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center in Seattle and companies like HPC Now and Microsoft. SPAC is broadly adopted by US National Labs in the Exascale Computing Project, as well as many HPC sites and companies around the world, like CERN and EPFL in Europe, Riken in Japan, and AMD. There are several important differences between EasyBuild and SPAC, however, ranging from the open source license they are released under to the specifics of how support for installing software packages is implemented and how both tools can be configured. Both EasyBuild and SPAC provide a couple of unique features that you may be interested in. Make sure you are well informed when choosing either tool for installing scientific software. Let's now take a closer look at how you can build container images using these tools. SPAC provides a SPAC containerized command to generate a container recipe for a given environment. This recipe will use the SPAC install command to install the desired software in the container image. Docker, Singularity and Podman are supported by SPAC. The generated recipes are multi-stage and the final image is stripped to only include what is needed to run the software, which results in smaller container images. You can customize the base image to use and specify labels or extra commands to run in the container recipe. Similarly, EasyBuild also provides experimental support for generating Docker and Singularity container recipes. Also here, the recipe itself will leverage EasyBuild to install the software in the container image. You can use an existing image as a base or you can start from a bare operating system. The modules for the installed software will be loaded automatically when starting the container image. The container support in EasyBuild is still experimental and currently focused on Red Hat based Linux distributions like CentOS. For more information, See the provided link to a recently recorded talk where using EasyBuild to build container images is covered in more detail. Enough about EasyBuild and SPAC for now. Let's talk about how container images are typically built, while paying specific attention to the performance aspect. One of the major advantages of containers is that you can build them once and then run anywhere, which is sometimes referred to as mobility of compute in an HPC context. In order for this to work, Container images must include generically optimized binaries to ensure that they can run on a wide range of hosts, no matter which specific CPU is available in that system. This implies that a lot of the capabilities provided by the host CPU may not be used at all. For example, the AVX2 functional units on an Intel Haswell processor. The impact of the performance of the software included in the container can be dramatic. See the example in the slide, where a 60% speedup was observed for a simple F50W benchmark when using a binary that was specifically built for an Intel Haswell system, rather than using a binary that works on the previous generation processor. By using container images that include generic binaries, we are basically sacrificing performance to provide mobility of compute. Can we do better? This brings us to ArchPack, a new library to reason about system architecture aspects which was originally part of SPAC but is now available as a standalone library. 
Currently, Archpec is focused on CPU microarchitectures, but the intention is to extend the concept to other aspects of the system, like network and GPUs. The library includes a JSON file that provides detailed information about a wide range of CPU microarchitectures, covering Intel, AMD, ARM, and, and Power CPUs, and including the code names for these microarchitectures as well. A Python library for Archpec is available to leverage this data. This project is a collaboration between myself and Todd Gamblin and Massimiliano Kupo, who are both SPAC developers. Currently, Archback allows you to answer a couple of specific questions about the CPU in your system, or of a specific CPU microarchitecture. First of all, it can collect information about the CPU in your system and use that information to determine the code name of the CPU microarchitecture. In addition, it allows to check whether the CPU is compatible with binaries built for a specific specific microarchitecture, so we can answer questions like, can my host run binaries that were compiled for Intel Haswell? It can also query the capabilities of a CPU to figure out whether an Intel Haswell system supports binaries that include AVX512 instructions. The answer here is no, by the way. Archback also knows about different compilers and which compiler option should be used to target a specific CPU microarchitecture. Finally, because Archpack can do a partial ordering of a list of microarchitectures, it can pick the best match from a list of options. If you have different binaries that include instructions from the AVX, AVX2 and AVX512 instruction sets, for example, Archpack can tell you which of these are the best option to run on an Intel Broadwell system. Let's look at the opportunities that Archpack creates in the context of HPC and containers. In our view, it enables not having to choose between performance and mobility of compute. You can have both. When levering Archpack, you can build in container images that are specific to a particular CPU microarchitecture and tag these images accordingly in an automated way. When running these container images, Archpack can be used to do a compatibility check. Does the image actually work on a given host? Taking into account the CPU microarchitecture. Micro if not, we can produce a clear error message, rather than letting the software crash with the puzzling illegal instruction error. If the container image is compatible with your host, but maybe not fully using some of the capabilities of the CPU, you could print a warning message to inform you of that. TensorFlow has done something like this for their pre-built binaries. If multiple container images are available, each including the same software stack but built for a different CPU microarchitecture, Archpack enables you to pick the best suited one for your host effectively avoiding the trade-off between performance and mobility of compute. To wrap up, we want to ask for your help. We would love to see the code names in Archpack become a standard in the HPC community, but we can't do that by ourselves. It would be great if CPU vendors and other companies like Cray and Red Hat are willing to contribute to this project by adopting Archpack, adding updates, and if necessary, making corrections into the JSON file in which all the detailed information about CPU microarchitectures is stored. We currently already have a Python library which can be used to leverage this data and reason about CPU microarchitectures, but we would like to see similar libraries for other programming languages. Go is already a work in progress. Finally, we're open to ideas and contributions to expand this concept to other aspects of the system, like GPUs and network. If you're interested, reach out to us via email, GitHub, Slack or Twitter. It's not hard to find Todd and myself through these channels. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. I hope I didn't say anything controversial about SPAC that will enrage SPAC developers. And if I did, and they get to me because of it, please tell my wife I love her.